Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the post-fight press conference. For those that are joining us on the live stream, we are, of course, still on site here at Revel in Atlantic City. We've got the fighters behind us, of course. We'll open it up for questions just after opening comments. So for those members of the press that are joining us, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, the focus turned upon you for questions, and we'll do that after our opening comments. So we'll do that right now. For the CEO and Chairman of Bellator MMA, he'll have the opening comments, Mr. Bjorn Rebney. Thanks, Mike. Um, this is why I became a fan of this game, was to watch an event like this and see seven fights make a TV broadcast, to see seven finishes, to see the kind of performances we saw on both sides of this table tonight. It just um, That's why I fell in love with the game, and that's why I watch the game, and that's why I watch everything out there in MMA. So just, I mean, I hate to be kind of silly about this, but a big applause for these guys who gave us this kind of night, please. I, uh, I'd like to thank our partners here at Rebel. This place is absolutely magnificent. That's, that arena just rocked tonight. It was packed. There was not an available seat. It looked like a million dollars. This is just a, um, a, an unbelievable facility, great hotel. They've been hugely gracious hosts to us. And to the people that work with me day in and day out at Spike that make this kind of thing possible, that make events like this with this caliber of fighter and these caliber of fights available on free TV consistently week in and week out. A huge thank you to our partners at Spike. Helped us put on another amazing show tonight for fans. Two hours, seven fights, seven finishes, and the kind of fights you saw tonight. So a big thank you to those guys. Um, I'll turn it to the fighters at this point. Um, Justin Wilcox, a guy who was not supposed to be in our tournament at Featherweight. We called him two weeks before the tournament was supposed to start. He was, I think, 25 pounds overweight at the time and through just um, guts and determination was able to make it into this tournament, make it through the first couple rounds. Um, a huge applause to him. Uh, an absolute warrior. Ter terrific, terrific human being and a guy that I'm thrilled to have fighting in our organization and, and who will be back. And uh, Patricio Pitbull, that's his third tournament championship that he has been in. It's the second one that he has won. Um, just an amazing performance tonight. You're really looking at one of the greatest featherweights we have in the game. Um, and he'll get an opportunity to fight for the title in short order. So just a spectacular performance by Patricio Pitbull. Só tenho a agradecer, está na organização o melhor do mundo. E eu vim aqui para dar o meu melhor. So I want to thank uh, everybody for the support, uh, Bellator, and uh, he'll, every time he comes to the cage, he'll come to give his best, and uh, except for the next one. Yeah, I would like to thank Bellator, you know, um, for giving me this opportunity. You know, uh, like you said, I took it on sh short notice. Not two weeks, seven days, 22 pounds, you know, so, um, but yeah, I'm excited to be fighting for Bellator. I, I, you know, I was telling my manager, I was like, man, get me in there. These guys put on exciting fights and, uh, you know, so I'm just really happy to be here and uh, uh, just look forward to being, being that next uh, tournament. You know, I told Keisha, hopefully, you know, I pray that he wins, you know, so me and him can do it again. Thank you. I'd like to say a big thank you to Tom McKenna. Um, stood in Marcus Calvon is one of the best bantamweights we've got in the world. Um, and uh, to step up and fight a guy like that, um, even with notice, is, is a, a tremendous show of courage and he put on his, uh, a good fight. Uh, Marcus, we usually see you knocking people out, but it was, a, it was a breath of fresh air to see your jiu-jitsu today and that is just a masterful, masterful art when you put it on inside the cage. So congratulations on a big win. You'll see him next in our next 135 pound tournament and I would, uh, he'd probably be a betting favorite to win the whole thing. So, congrats. Eu só quero agradecer a oportunidade que Bellator está me dando. E eu não escolho adversário, eu luto com quem, com quem Bellator for mandar o nome para mim, eu vou lutar com qualquer um adversário, um 3-5, eu luto com qualquer um. Eu quero agradecer também meu meu oponente que aceitou lutar comigo, é um guerreiro, um garoto novo, tem muito talento. E estou muito feliz hoje pela minha vitória e estou 
muito triste pela derrota do meu irmão Sérgio. E ele vai dar a volta por cima e eu estou aí para lutar com qualquer um. Ele quer agradecer Bellator por dar ele a oportunidade de lutar. Ele quer agradecer Tom McKenzie por ter lutado. Ele é um jovem, ele sabe que ele tem um grande futuro, ele é um super tough oponente. E at 135, Laura said, anybody, you know, they put in front of him, he's ready to fight. He's very happy for his win today. And thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, Bellator also for letting me fight for him. And uh, it was, uh, he came out and did a little bit different than what uh, he was expecting. A lot of times you see him, uh, he's a banger. He likes to stand up and bang with everybody, but it's a little bit different this fight. But, so... Uh, I just want to thank Bellator again. Thanks. Uh, in our Volkov Minikov fight for the heavyweight world title, I'm just I'm thrilled to say our heavyweight division has just exploded in terms of the level of fighter that we've got fighting at heavyweight for us. Um, our former champion, our former champion Volkov, is a huge talent. Um, you can see him back in our cage in very short order. He's a wickedly talented fighter. It's Mr. Minikov's night tonight. Um, he is also an incredible talent with the Sambo background, the incredible strikes, a great power in his hands. He's got a lot of the facets of the game that some European fighters don't come with, which is incredible wrestling, great takedowns, great hips. So um, just two great, great fighters. Just unbelievably exciting to watch. Everything you would ask out of heavyweights. Um, and I'm just a big congratulations to both of them and to our new heavyweight champion, Mr. Menikov. Congratulations. <laughs> Только у меня, у нашей команды, у команды Fight Nights. Я хочу поблагодарить своих менеджеров, Камила Гаджиева, Алексея Жернакова. Также хочу поблагодарить Александра и его команду за хороший бой. Я очень хорошо отношусь к Александру. Спасибо большое. Я хочу поблагодарить всех фанатов, которые работают за нас. Я хочу поблагодарить мою команду. Uh, Fight Nights team, uh, my managers, uh, Kamil Gadjiv and Alexey Zhernakov. And I want to thank my opponent, Alexander, and his team because it was a great fight, it was a great performance. I really like him as a fighter, I really like him as a person. And I think uh, we showed a very good fight tonight. Thank you, everybody. So, thank you very much for Vitaly. He's a very tough guy. Um, he's a real uh, champion. Uh, thank you. For Bellator, for this uh, fight, is undefeated uh, fighter. It's, uh, it was very good. Um, uh, sorry for my team for this lose, for all people who spent time on me, and uh, thank you for all guys who support me. Um, so I a uh, little bit upset with this fight uh, because I was uh, before in uh, worst situation and uh, when I won this fight, but so it was top. Uh, I think a little bit earlier, but no patience for Vitaly. He's a, a real tough guy. He, uh, he wins this fight. I won this fight. Thank you. And uh, I think most everybody knows the story of kind of how this fight came about. But what most people don't know is that um, the fight between Quentin Rampage Jackson and Joey Beltran was one that we made a lot of calls on at that last minute when things fell out and Tito fractured his neck. Um, we called fighter after fighter after fighter, and there was one fighter in MMA who called us religiously the second the announcement was made, and it was a gentleman sitting to my right. Didn't hesitate, didn't negotiate, um, leaped at the opportunity for a fight like this, and said, I'm in the gym, I'm training, I'm ready to go. So um, big, big kudos to the gentleman sitting to my right. He stood up. documented in terms of what we were doing on Spike, what kind of a camp and what kind of preparation Quentin Rampage Jackson was putting into the prep for the Tito fight. Um, there were no surprises that his knees were back and that he was going to be ready to fight. So for Joey Beltran to step up like that, a big applause to him. And also, um, he's a gentleman that will do damage with us in our 205 division. I can't wait to see him back in the cage. Um, and the gentleman sitting to my left, uh, we, had a, we had a plan that he and I put together together as partners. Um, and that plan has started to work itself through the system. And there was a little bit of a deviation on the theme a couple of weeks ago, and we put it right back on track. We were able to get a huge fight here at a big sold-out house at Rebel, <coughs> let fans on Spike watch that fight for free, um, and everything that he and I have been talking about, the plan is working. The knees are back. Um, 
you saw the punching power is back. It, it's all coming back into the fold. And you're going to see a lot more, but you've just seen the beginning and the infancy of this plan right now. And uh, the orchestration will be a beautiful thing to watch if you're a fan of MMA. So uh, a big, huge congratulations to my friend and our business partner, Quinn Rampage Jackson. <laughs> Um, I want to say thank you to Rampage, uh, thank you to Bjorn, thank you to Bellator for giving me the, the chance to come out and uh, earn some Christmas money that I definitely was not going to have until uh, Tito pushed out. So, thank you guys. Um, bottom line, it, it sucks, it is what it is what it is. I'm looking at it like that, you know, I am, uh, I'm able to go home, nothing's wrong with my face, go see my beautiful wife and my kids and enjoy the holidays and uh, get ready for the 205 tournament. And I would love uh, Rampage to fight again. I really love it. We can do it at catch weight. We'll do it at heavyweight. I don't care. Um, I would just love to fight you again, man. I, and uh, with uh, you know who not as the referee. <laughs> That's all. I mean, me and this guy, fucking yeah, man. We're a little upset, but it's all good, man. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to Bellator, to Bjorn Rebney, Revel. This place is awesome. Ridiculous how nice this place is. Uh, and that's about it, man. Thank you, guys. Say a special thanks. That, that show, I got so much respect for you, bro, for stepping up. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of people are not like us. We like true warriors, man. I will gladly fight you again one day when you have enough time to train. You tough, dude. You know, you had a great game plan. And, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was good. You did a good job. And I want to thank, um, you know, Spike and um, Bellator. This place, you guys have no idea. You know, I, I fought in all the big shows all over the world, and um, you know. This place, they, the energy here is just so good. I just like the way they treat all the fighters. You see how Bjorn, like, first thing he do is, like, congratulate us. Like, we, we feel good. That's why, you know what I'm saying, I, I see the fighters here, they come up on the show. You know what I'm saying, we put our lives on the line, we put our health on the line to entertain people. But sometimes we don't feel appreciated. But here in Bellator, we do. And, and that's why I noticed, like, why you guys fight so hard. And that's why I train so hard. That's why I fight so hard. And I just want to uh, thank you, man. You changed me, man. You got my knees fixed. Uh, no one ever done anything like that for me. And you guys want to um, see a different change in me. You already see the way I was fighting a tough guy over here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to mix it up and change back to a true mixed martial artist. And that's only, you know what I'm saying, the beginning of, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a lot more stuff coming. And I'm, I'm going to go back to the gym right after Thanksgiving and start back working hard. I got a, a strong team with me. Wolf Larry, if you guys have been paying attention, um, we've been pretty much undefeated in, in, in Bellator, except for um, two, uh, two of my teammates fought each other. So they don't count, you know what I'm saying? Congo won, so, you know what I'm saying? Still, we kind of like, that's the only loss, and we lost to ourselves, so, you know. <laughs> we, we've been, you know, it still don't count. But, you know, I got some great coaches, Dave Jackson, you know what I'm saying? We got uh, uh, Antonio McKee and Tom Blackledge and, and Gavin Stewart, and, you know what I'm saying? Wolf man, these guys, they train me hard, but the last couple of years, it's been looking like I've been sucking because I've been hurt and I've been out there fighting hurt, and, you know, I. <coughs> I've been trying to, you know what I'm saying, keep it real, and but fans think you're making excuses, but now it's on. I just want to thank everybody for that still support me, and there's a lot more years left in me. Thank you, guys. Gentlemen, thank you very much. For those that may have just recently joined us in the live stream, we welcome you. post fight press conference underway. We're still here on site at Revel Atlantic City. So with opening comments taken care of, gentlemen, again, thank you very much. Let's open it up to those members of the press that have questions. We'll take the first question. Gentlemen, here you go. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Congratulations. Luke Thomas here for MMA Fighting. Uh, Rampage, <clears throat> can you talk about what actually was the problem with the knee? Could you not put weight on it? Was it uh, constant pain? What exactly was it doing to you? Well, um, I injured my right knee. Um, Years ago, I, I injured uh, training for the Rashad Evans fight, and then, um, you know, it just took its toll. Then later, I tore my meniscus uh, a month before I fought Bader, and then um, the left knee, uh, John Jones kicked it backwards when I, when I fought him, and it's, it's never been the same since. And so it's just like I've been, I, I've been training on two bad knees, and you know, I couldn't really um, train the way. I my breath does that too. It's bad. I got mouthpiece breath. It's bad. I'm sorry, guys. This microphone's trying to get out of my hand. I, I, I keep it away like this. And so it's like the, um, it was like very painful. 
Like I did surgery on the hip and the meniscus to fix, but it was it was still painful after um, after um, after my last fight and my left knee. I, I don't know. I got uh, MRIs on it and stuff like that, but I don't know why. It's, I guess because it's hyperextended. I don't know why it's in so much pain. But now it's it good. And question for Bjorn: uh, You have two fighters, obviously upset with uh, Dan Rubiata's stoppages. What is your sense? Did you feel they were early on time? Uh, you know, look, I haven't had a chance to go back and look at them, but. Um, Dan does a pretty amazing job. He's one of the best we've got in the game. And, you know, look, if, if, uh, if a referee is ever going to make a mistake, I would always rather see that mistake be made a little bit early than a little bit late. So, you know, I was looking at both of them. I thought, the, you know, the uppercut in the heavyweight world title fight, that was a vicious uppercut that would have knocked out most horses. And, and when he unleashed 20 seconds to go in the round, um, a lot of clean shots landed, you know. It just, it, it, from what I saw, they didn't seem like early stoppages. They seemed like good stoppages where the referee was paying attention to fighter safety, which is, you know, paramount to what everybody should be paying attention to. So I, I don't have much of an issue with it. Rampage, given what you've gone through over the last 10 or so months, the last three fights with the UFC, the first fight here, it seems like there's been a tremendous weight, at least that's the impression that I'm getting, there's been this tremendous weight being lifted off your shoulders. If you could delve into that a little bit more for us, just what this win today be, uh, means for you. <laughs> it's the breath. Should have got it. Man, I'm sorry. It, you know, it, it, it means a lot because now I can train hard, and that and that's was the um, thing. It was like I knew why I wasn't performing well uh, to myself. You know, and my team they they knew why I wasn't performing well because they was with me. They saw that I, I couldn't train. Uh, properly, but I always thought that, well, you know, I got a puncher's chance, and, and you know, I, I think I, I still can go into the fight, like, half ready and, and still do well. You know, I did okay. I lost some fights by by decision, like, you know, John Jones, he, he's, like, the best of weight class. He, he beat me fair and square. And, you know, I was I was pretty much healthy for that fight. My, my right knee bothered me a little bit, but it wasn't injured. And, but the other two fights, you know, I, I just wasn't myself. And today, you know, in this training camp, I just knew that I was going to um, do well. I knew it no matter who I fought that I was I was going to uh, whoop their ass. I just know it because like um, John Jones, the only time in my whole career when I came, when I came in a fight in, in a really good shape and I didn't get the victory. That's the only time that uh, I was overconfident for the fight. I was like, man, I'm in the best shape of my life. There's no way I'm losing. And and today, the same thing. I'm like, man, I'm in better shape than I was when I fought John Jones. There's no there's no way I started off slow, but you know what I'm saying? I, I got back to my whole self. And, it's, a, that's, you, you, it's hard to explain how, how good I feel now that now I know I can go back and train like I used to and stuff and, and go and perform because like, it's dangerous if you go in their cage and, and you can't really protect yourself and you're not ready. It's real dangerous if you get in there with these guys. Look how, look how big this guy is. He's tough. He hit hard. You know, it's crazy. My breath is bad. <laughs> It actually, it's not Rampage's breath, so you can put your dents away. It was an RF hit with that microphone, so that microphone's out. Uh, next question from members of the press. Hi, Chris. Uh, Christian Stein with MMAJunkie.com. Uh, for Joey, um, you had talked in the past about uh, uh, fighting in some minor organizations in which uh, the check bounced and, you know, things like that. You know what I'm talking about. Um, now you headline your own card here. I mean, can you talk about the progression and how you feel from from coming from that place to uh, to a night like tonight, just regardless of the result? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I mean, I would hope that's the, the you know the plan of anybody that gets into this is to eventually fight people on the level of Rampage Jackson and headline shows. I mean, why, why else would we do this? Um, um, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, as far as my career goes, this is this is the last place I'm going to fight, I'm going to make my run for it, I'm going to get in that tournament, I'm going to go for it. If I don't do it, I'm not going to go back to Gladiator Challenge or Wild Bill's country cage fight in Oklahoma and, and build my record just for the sake of ego. Yeah. I want to fight the best in the world, I want to fight for a high level organization. And if I can't do it, then it's alright, I'll go get a normal job and fucking raise my kids and enjoy my life, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is an awesome moment. To uh, headline a show, headline a big show against a world class, like literally world class opponent, like few a former world champion, like for a, you know a chubby little Mexican kid from Carlsbad, California. That's pretty cool. My life's 
my life definitely doesn't suck, so it's good. It's good. That answers. It's a good process, I guess, to answer your question. And for Rampage, uh, what can we expect to see you doing uh, outside of MMA, uh, especially since uh, Bellator has an off season? Uh, so, I mean, you've talked about other things like you know, professional wrestling and what have you. Yeah, yeah I'm still, I'm still um, have plans to do professional wrestling. I, I got to learn the trade. You know, that's where I get to uh, be a big kid. I always wanted to be a pro wrestler even before I even knew what MMA was. So I still do stuff like that. And, um, you know, I got other projects that, that I like doing. I'm still trying to get into the video game world. So I keep myself busy. But other than that, I'm just going to keep training and keep working and, and getting better. I want to um, bring my, ga uh, my ground game um, back up like it used to be back in the day. So I'm just going to be back in the gym. And uh, Patricio, um, the strategy against uh, Wilcox, was it to hurry up and get the uh, TKO as soon as possible? Because he's so dangerous until the very last breath, as we saw in uh, previous fights. <coughs> Wilcox is a wrestler very duro. Ele, das últimas duas apresentações, ele conseguiu colocar os seus adversários para baixo e depois disso os oponentes não conseguiram reverter. Eu fiz a estratégia em cima disso e eu queria acabar a luta rápido sim, para não ter complicações futuras nos rounds seguintes. É, o Wilcox, em seus primeiros fights, ele controlou os guys e tocou todo mundo e controlou bem e não no on the ground. So uh, our strategy was, um, you know, to uh, keep the fight on the feet, you know, and uh, finish, finish as soon as possible, but no one's going to be a tough fight, but uh, everything worked out well, my hands landed, and uh, so that's pretty much it. Sorry, one more from Bjorn here. Um, here we go. Bjorn, um, you've got, sorry, you got Patricio, who just won the tournament, and you've also got out there Frodo Hospitalayev, who won last season. <laughs> Sorry, you got a new featherweight champion in Strauss. So what's the plan there? You've got Frodo in the wings, and now he won. What's the game plan in terms of the competitive schedule to get those guys title shots? That's a good question. Um, Frodo's having visa issues right now uh, in Eastern Europe. So he is trapped in Eastern Europe and can't get in. Still haven't made a determination as to whether we're going to do Strauss Curran three, um, coming off the heels of Strauss Curran two, and then he'll get the next guy up. So it, there's a lot of timing issues at play. I don't know how it'll all play itself out. We'll try to get it done as quick as we can, um, but it just seems like the, the, there's so many quality featherweights in this organization, and it just seems that that's a division that backs itself up. Um, but you know, if Frodo's situation can't get cleared, he'll either fight Strauss next. Pitbull will either fight Strauss next or he'll fight the winner of Strauss current if we decide to do Strauss current three. Got it. And one more for Rampage. So you said uh, in, the, in the days leading up to tonight, you were over Tito Ortiz. You were sort of put it in the rearview mirror. Now that you fought and uh, you seem to be in a great mood because of the victory, uh, how do you feel about it now? Still Tito in the rearview? Would you reconsider? How are you feeling about it? Uh, you know, I moved on from that. That, that ship has sailed, you know. Uh, 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 much love to Tito, you know what I'm saying, I got mad love for him, but, you know, that was a big letdown, you know, me training really hard to, to fight Tito, and you guys don't know how hard it is to um, mentally prepare to, to uh, fight a friend, because I was going to whoop Tito's ass, for real, you know, I'm, the, I'm his friend, you know what I'm saying, I like him, I love the guy, when we hang out, we have a good time, and it was kind of cool, you know what I'm saying? You talk shit to somebody face to face, we'd text each other, like, yeah, I'm training hard, I'm gonna kick your ass, blah, blah, blah. You know, we had that before, you know, I didn't do that with Beltran, you know, I didn't, you don't do that with nobody. I, I, I was looking forward to that, you know? I was looking forward to making Tito twerk in front of all y'all, because he lost the bet, you know? But now I'm like, man, you know? Only way I'll fight Tito again, if, if Bjorn said, hey man, I, I really need you to fight Tito again, I'm like, oh, okay. Other than that, no, I wouldn't. I was like, no, I'll give me somebody else. How you doing? I got a question for Rampage, Jason Gotti with Ring Fever. Um, my, I have a two-part question. My first question is, I can definitely see a difference from uh, your fights, your past previous fights in the previous organization that you were with. 
to the Rampage Jackson of old that I always associated yourself with, um, the Pride days. You know, Bel uh, Joey Beltrain, he came in there, he stood with you, he banged, he didn't try to hug you to death, which was good. And, uh, you know, I think that the fans absolutely, you know, really appreciated that fight, especially here at Belter, where it's about working your way up and it's about the fighters. So my question for you is, mentally, is, is, is this the best Rampage Jackson that we've seen in a long time? Uh, yeah, I can tell that tonight, you know what I'm saying, uh, I, I showed some stuff that I haven't shown for, for a while. Uh, in this camp, I was um, able to do a lot of things. You know, at this camp, I, I actually enjoyed training. Um, I haven't enjoyed training for years because I've been in so much pain. I'm not going to uh, name off all the, all the things that was um, bothering me. It was more than my, just my knees. But it's weird, you know, when you get positive and, and you get a lot of positive energy and stuff around you, it, it seems like uh, make even uh, other things better because some of my other little small injuries stuff that wasn't like se severe even uh, didn't, didn't act up. You know, you remember I pulled out in one of my fights in Brazil because I had a, a hurt elbow. You know, it's things was like positive, this count was positive. I got a really good positive vibe from, from you guys over here. And, you know, I'm happy to fight again. It's weird. It's, it's, it's a long story. But, yeah, I think that you guys are going to see better better than how I was tonight because I, I felt like I, I was a little rusty. I started off really slow, and I haven't fought in 11 months. Now, I want to get back in there. I'm, I already asked them again, like, hey, after Thanksgiving, I want to get back in there. I want to fight again soon. So I, I, I keep it going. I, I, I want to um, get the rust out the way, and I want to fight as much possible as I can. I think I got, like, three to five more years in me. Absolutely, Rampage. And I agree with you 100%. My follow-up question is pertains to uh, your professional wrestling. Um, being a professional wrestler myself, I understand how hard it is. I would just like you to elaborate. Um, how difficult is that training compared to MMA training? Obviously, it's a different animal, but it's still physical, and you still have to, you know, take a lot of bumps and bruises. Well, you know what the thing about pro wrestling, uh, what a lot of people that don't do it, that don't understand about pro wrestling, is like they they call it fake and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's it's entertainment, but that stuff hurts. Everything, everything hurts. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I have to give them uh, mad respect because you know I've done movies, I've, I've done action movies, and those guys. If you go, if I, I hear people talking bad about pro wrestling, but I feel like if you're gonna talk bad about pro wrestling, you might as well talk bad about action movies. But you got respect for wrestling because they do their own stunts. The, pro, the people in action movies, they don't be doing this stuff themselves. They have stunt men that do all this stuff for themselves. The pro wrestlers, they out there doing this stuff themselves, and that's why I, I give them mad respect. And, and, you know, that stuff actually does hurt. You, even when you hit the ropes, it, it, it looks like it don't hurt. That hurt. And they, when people slam it, that hurt. That stuff really does hurt, and, and people do it. But it's a lot of fun. And I see the guys at TNA, they have fun with it. And, and it's like acting, and you get to be a big kid. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about having fun and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people don't know that. I thought I was going to be a pro wrestler, but then one of my friends, it's, it's his birthday today, Dave Roberts, he, we used to wrestle each other in high school, and we used to do, like, we was the best wrestlers in Memphis, and we used to always see each other in the finals. So we got tired of, you know, wrestling each other. Our coach was best friend, and we used to put on fake wrestling matches to the last two minutes of, of the match, and we used to, we was like the most famous wrestlers in Memphis because of that. And I, we thought we was going to be pro wrestlers, then I went to college to wrestle, and he started fighting, and then um, he, he trained me, and he told me, oh, no, you're doing MMA. And he's the reason why I'm here today. And today is birthday. He's like, he's like, hey man, you want on my birthday? So I just had to put that out there. I just had to give, give my, my brother's birthday shout. Happy birthday, Dave Roberts, if you're seeing this. But you're right. Pro wrestling is is, is tough. It's, and I, I'm looking forward to doing it. I, I, but I hope I don't wrestle you because you look like you're pretty tough. Well, actually, we could wrestle one day. We'll talk outside. Yeah, and I don't want to wrestle you, brother. <laughs> and he's trying to knock me out. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Let's check the members of the press one last time for questions. All right, gentlemen, we'll take one more question. Hey, Bjorn, I'm just wondering, what's next for Tito Ortiz? <laughs> <laughs> Joey's ready to step up right now. <laughs> Try to schedule for, back for Friday. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> That's a good question. I don't have an answer for that question. Um, first, first we got to figure out what's, what's going on with his neck and how to get when the fracture is 100% um, healed. If it's 100% healed, we've got a lot of tests to be done, a lot of conversations with Tito, but we'll see.
I thought you were gonna ask a wrestling question. What's up with that? Maybe later, okay, I'll be here. Those members of the press, we thank you for your questions. Your own remedy and the finders will be available after the conclusion of the press conference for individual interviews. Right now, though, we'll throw it back to Bjorn Repney for closing comments. Thanks, Mike. Again, just a, a big thank you to Revel, to our partners at Spike, and um, to the gentlemen um, who are sitting up here at this dais with me. A big congratulations to them. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us here live. We thank you for those that have joined us in the stream. We thank you as well. Next week, next Friday night, same time, 9 o'clock Eastern time. We'll do it again. For details, just log on to Bellator.com. For those in attendance, we'll see you downstairs on the casino floor. Have a great night here at Revel, Atlantic City.